pronouncing the names of Pokemon is a popular topic of discussion. And honestly, I don't think arguing over them is a great use of time. At the end of the day, most Pokemon names are made up semi-nonsense words, so how you pronounce them doesn't really make a difference. And that's especially the case because many Pokemon have had multiple pronunciations over the years. The main series games don't have voice acting, which... Gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of that, but that's not what this video is about. That does mean figuring out official pronunciations is more difficult, though, because the places where you can hear their names said out loud are pretty limited. For the most part, the primary sources for pronunciations are the anime, the 3DS app Pokedex 3D Pro, and a small selection of spin-off games, like the Stadium games and Pokemon Battle Revolution. And across this limited list of sources, there's a lot of Pokemon with more than one official pronunciation, so let's take a look at them. This Pokemon is infamous for being said a ton of different ways. The most common English pronunciation is Arceus, because according to the anime dub's voice director Tom Wayland, they wanted to avoid the start of its name sounding like a foul word in British English. But Pokemon Battle Revolution called it Arceus, and one movie trailer called it Arceus. So all three are valid pronunciations. Arceus is just the one the anime chose, on account of this being, you know, a family-friendly franchise. And there's a ton of other examples like that. This guy has been called Aron in the anime, and Aeron in Pokedex 3D Pro. This guy could apparently be Zangoose or Zangoose. Heck, the announcer in Pokemon Battle Revolution calls this Pokemon Scyther. Scyther is sent out. With a voice TH sound like in the word there, as opposed to the voiceless TH in the word thing. The technical term for these sounds is dental fricatives. Anyway, there are tons of other examples I've found, so here's a bunch more Pokemon with more than one official pronunciation. And that's not even close to the entire list. So it doesn't make sense to say that every Pokemon has one quote-unquote correct pronunciation, because there often isn't one. Since different sources disagree on certain names, we shouldn't take any one of them as gospel, and we shouldn't dismiss anything else as wrong. There's also a lot of cases where people know the official way to say a Pokemon's name, but they choose to ignore it and say it some other way. Some pronunciations just don't roll off the tongue that well, so fans will call them something else. One of the most infamous examples Examples is this guy. As far as I can tell, this Pokemon has always been called Ferrothorn in official Pokemon media. I'm using Ferrothorn! But the vast majority of fans call it Ferrothorn instead for various reasons. For one, it just like sounds better, man. That's a subjective thing, of course, but it seems to be a sentiment a lot of people share. But the other reason is that Ferrothorn makes more logical sense. Ferrothorn is a Steel-type Pokémon, which is the name of the type that represents all metals for some godforsaken reason. Why not just call it the metal type like the TCG? That's besides the point. Ferrothorn's name is a combination of Thorn and Ferris, which describes things that are made of or contain iron. And one of its abilities is Iron Barbs. So it makes sense to say its name the same way you'd say Ferris, with the stress on the first syllable. Because it clearly has a ton of metallic design elements. Pokemon pronunciations don't always come directly from their name origin, of course, but it makes perfect sense why fans generally landed on Ferrothorn. Another example is Pokemon Emerald's Box Legendary. This guy's official pronunciation is Rayquaza, but a lot of people say Rayquaza instead. Legendary Pokemon's name origins tend to be harder to figure out compared to regular Pokemon, because their names are usually a little more abstract. It's not immediately obvious that Rayquaza's name is a combination of Ray and Quasar, but some people will learn the origin and choose to call it Rayquaza anyway, and that's perfectly fine. I can't blame them, because it does make intuitive sense just looking at the word. We've also got... Reuniclus. Yeah, that's the official pronunciation, apparently. Reuniclus, let's go! Yeah. This is one I wouldn't be able to intuit in a million years. Most fans prefer saying Reuniclus, which is also the way I say this Pokemon's name. The way the syllables are stressed makes more sense to me this way. Plus, that pronunciation sounds closer to words like Nucleus and Homunculus. And there's a couple other unofficial pronunciations that I think roll off the tongue better as well. Conkledur, Garbodor, stuff like that. I usually use the official pronunciation Garboder because its name's a combination of garbage and odor. But I'd be lying if I said I never read its name and called it Garbodor, especially if I'm reading a script. It doesn't really make sense to me to complain about people saying Pokemon names wrong, when the majority of people use at least one unofficial pronunciation. I ran a poll about Ferrothorn on my community tab, and over 90% of people picked the unofficial quote-unquote wrong one, which is also the one I use. I love this comment I got on that poll, by the way. Just call it Green Guy with Spikes. Amen, brother. World peace achieved. Anyway, the whole thing is a lot like this acronym. Steve Wilhite invented this file format, and he called it GIF. But the most popular pronunciation is GIF. So it's clear that the creator of something can choose the official pronunciation, but they can't control what the popular pronunciation winds up being. That doesn't make either pronunciation wrong. If anything, it validates the unofficial one. We live in a world where multiple pronunciations for the same thing can coexist. And it's the same kind of deal with Pokemon. If you think the way you say a name makes more sense, or it sounds better coming out of your mouth, more power to you. Just because Game Freak pronounces it a certain way, doesn't mean every other way is wrong. Some other folks here on YouTube lean even further in that direction. Fellows like Flygon HG will take some Pokemon's names and come up with the most ridiculous pronunciation they can think of. 
So I switch to Hello, and after Lepra goes for a second Paris song, that brings in Arcanine fourth though. Heck, sometimes I'll pronounce a Pokemon's name two different ways in the same battle. He leads Magnemity. A priority Mach Punch is enough to knock out the Magnemite before it can do anything. I reached out to Flygon on Twitter, I'm still calling it Twitter, and I asked him whether he does it because he finds it amusing, or if he's trying to make a point that it doesn't matter how you pronounce stuff like this. And he said it was a little bit of both. Seeing comments saying you mispronounce XYZ all the time gets pretty annoying, so screw it. Say hello to Blastoise. That's not a pronunciation he uses, just a silly one I came up with while I was writing the script. Although we did point out during our conversation that if we were using name origins, Blastoise's name would be Blastus, as in Tortoise. I haven't really gotten those kinds of comments, but this is a fairly small channel, so I wouldn't be surprised if they started rolling in eventually. Regardless of which pronunciation you pick, somebody's gonna tell you what's wrong. Anyway, check out Flygon HG channel if you haven't already, link in the description. Thanks for your input, man. Here's another thing I wanted to bring up. A lot of quote-unquote wrong pronunciations do have quite a bit of logic to them. Take this Pokemon, for example. Official material calls it Pidgeot, and that's the most popular pronunciation among fans, too. But it makes perfect sense that people might see this name and call it Pidget. Despite not really looking like a pigeon, it's pretty clear that that's where Pidgeot gets part of its name from. And for that matter, the same goes for its pre-evolutions, Pidgey and Pidgeotto. So the same way pigeon is two syllables, I can't blame anybody for thinking Pidgeot would be the same. While we're on the topic though, I'm not the first person to point this out by any means, but it's pretty weird that Pidgeot's name is just his pre-evolution's name with two letters chopped off. You'd think the full evolution would get the longer name. Like imagine if this was Fracture and this was Fraxu. When Pokemon Scarlet and Violet were coming out, I was pleasantly surprised to see Giraffe get an evolution. It's not my favorite Pokemon by any means, but oh my god, half the Pokemon from Gen 2 are borderline unusable, so I'm glad that a lot of them have gotten evolutions in the years since then. Johto was filled to the brim with weak Pokemon. Anyway, when I saw the evolution's name, I assumed the G in the middle would be a soft G like in Giraffe, or the start of Giraffe Rig, Ferrigiraffe. But according to all the material I've seen, this Pokemon's official pronunciation is Ferrigiraffe, with a hard G sound. Screw me, I guess. But there is an argument in this pronunciation's favor. The same way I thought the G would be soft like it is in Giraffe, you could also argue that it should be the same as the G at the end of Giraffe Rig. It's entirely possible Game Freak chose this way because it's just a little quicker, and a little easier to say. Soft G before an I isn't a hard and fast rule. You've got words like girl, gift, and give, but you've also got words like giant, magic, and ginger. So a G before an I can go either way. See also, GIF versus GIF. Side note, however you pronounce it, Ferrigaroth is just a fun name, I like it a lot. This Pokemon's official pronunciation is Ninkata. No, it's not. <laughs> this Pokemon's official pronunciation is Ninkata. But that's also a pretty weird one, because the end of its name comes from Cicada. Pretty much the only time I hear Ninkata is in MNJTV's videos. That being number 12, Ninkata has double the defense of Ninjask. But it's another unofficial pronunciation that makes a lot of sense. Here's the cover legendary for Pokemon Sword, and the bane of all competitive players' existences. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not always obvious where legendary Pokemon get their names from, so if I didn't watch this Pokemon's reveal trailer, I'd basically be taking a wild guess how it's pronounced. The official pronunciation is Zacian, but there's some other pronunciations I've heard. The most popular alternative, at least as far as I'm aware, is Zacian. Which does make sense as well. That's how ACIA is pronounced in words like facial or racial. And it's also similar to words like acacia or emaciate. And Zashi's name origin doesn't really help determine its pronunciation either. It's apparently a corruption of the words the cyan. So, you know, not a very helpful hint. There's about a zillion possibilities for a name like this. Alright, how about this Pokemon? Which, funnily enough, predates the games called Sword and Shield by like six years. Well, the two most common pronunciations I've heard are Aegislash and Aegislash. In the anime, they say Aegislash, but this is another one that could go either way. The AE combination of letters isn't that common in English, but it's pronounced differently in different words. You've got words like Archaeology, but there's also Aerial and Aerobics. This Pokemon's name comes from Slash and this word. Pretty much every dictionary agrees that this word is pronounced Aegis, but some of them also list Aegis as an alternative. So even if we break its name down, you could still go either way. Growing up, I learned that when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. But try telling that to my friends Melani, Kyren, and Edai. We're all getting together to watch Family Feed tonight. This rule of thumb usually works for some pairs of vowels like AI, OA, and EE, but it doesn't consistently work for other pairs like IE, EI, or UI. There's a joke here somewhere involving the words guide and juice, but I can't think of one right now. 
Personally, I always called it Aegislash, because I played a lot of Smash 4 back in the day. A couple of my friends played Ike, and his up special is called Ether. Ike yells the move's name as he executes it, so I figured Aegislash would sound like that too. Next, let's look at Electabuzz's pre-evolution. The official pronunciation is Elekid, but I've also heard people say Elekid, stressing the second syllable instead of the first. And I can understand why here as well. Its evolutions are called Electabuzz and Electivire, so it's not unreasonable to assume this guy has the same stress pattern. Alright, how about this butterfly poke? Pokemon. Wait, no, not that one. I don't think anybody on Earth would argue about Butterfree's name. I meant Fancy Gen 6 Butterfree. Some people call it Vivillon, but the official pronunciation is Vivion. The double L makes a Y sound. Let's do this, Vivion! And it makes perfect sense why it's pronounced that way. Vivion was introduced in the Kalos region, which is based on France. And in French, double L usually sounds like that when it comes after an I. The French word for butterfly is papillon, which is why the L's are pronounced that way in Vivion. But it's a name I wouldn't blame people for anglicizing. If you don't put two and two together, you probably won't assume the name is part French. And most of the time in English, double L's are pronounced the same as single L's. Billion, gallon, vanilla, so Vivillon isn't really a stretch. Here's another name with roots in another language. If you showed me this fellow's name and I never played Pokemon before, I would probably pronounce it Dino. But the official pronunciation is Dino, because the middle of its name is Ein, the German word for the number one. In that same vein, Zvilus includes the German word for two, and Hydreigon contains the German word for three. Anyway, back to this little guy. If you don't know about the German word hidden in Dino, its name sounds wildly uncreative, because Dino without the E is short for dinosaur. And there's about a zillion other Pokemon that could be called Dino in that case. The EI combination can be said multiple ways in English, so it's not a stretch to assume this guy is called Dino. I don't think I've ever heard Dano, but that would make sense for the same reason. And there's a bunch more legendaries and mythicals you could feasibly pronounce multiple ways as well. We've talked about Ar Zashian and Rayquaza earlier, and there's a few more as well. Some people will look at this Pokemon's name and think it's a combination of Gene and Insect, especially because it's a genetically engineered Pokemon. So calling it Gene Sect is fairly reasonable. But the official pronunciation is Genesect, as in Genesis. Or how about the Ice-type member of the Reggie? Can I even call this a trio anymore? The other Reggie's names are Regirock, Registeel, Regigigas, Regidrago, and Regieleki. But then this guy is Regice. That makes sense when you see how it's spelled, but it means it doesn't have the Reggie sound in its name like the others. So some people will call it Regiice, pronouncing the I twice. If I were in charge, I'd probably change the spelling to have two I's. Cause yeah, Regice makes sense, but it doesn't quite match the other golems. Another thing to consider is how many regular words have multiple pronunciations. Data, either, ant, pajamas, apricot, root, and so on and so on. And I don't see why Pokemon names can't be the same way. Not gonna lie, didn't think I'd have that much to say about Pokemon pronunciations, but I came across way more examples than I expected, and I didn't even include them all in this video. There's a ton of pronunciations in Pokemon Stadium 2 that I've never heard anywhere else. Oh, it's Aerodactyl, Ekans, Growlithe, Flapras, Raichu, Totodile. I also just think the discourse surrounding pronunciations is really unproductive. It's all completely inconsequential, so there's no point in correcting people on this kind of stuff, especially when the way they say it is a reasonable possibility. And in most cases, they are reasonable. As we've gone over, there's a good deal of logic in most fan pronunciations. If I gave you a nonsense word and asked you to read it out loud, then did the same with 10 other people, I'd expect to hear at least a few different ways to say it. And it's the same way with Pokemon. Plus, you're gonna know who I'm talking about whether I say Ferrothorn or Ferrothorn. And at the end of the day, that's what language is all about. As long as we understand each other, we're good. Welp, that's all I got for today. Thanks again to Flygon HG for providing his perspective. Go check out his channel, link in the description. And subscribe to this channel for more Pokemon content as well. I'll see you all next time. Good night, fellas. Sleep well.